In this video, let's learn about the histology of the uterine tube. The uterine tubes are also called as fallopian tubes. These are the paired muscular tubes in which each tube has two ends. One is the medial or a uterine end that is attached to the opening of the uterus and another is the lateral end that opens into the peritoneal cavity near to the ovary. So remember these are the paired tubes, these are the muscular tubes. And each tube has a medial and a lateral attachment. So this is the uterus. And these are the uterine tubes. And here will be the ovary. Simultaneously on the other side. So it has a lateral attachment and a medial attachment. Or it has two ends. One is the medial end. And another one is the lateral end. The medial end is also called as the uterine end which is attached to the opening into the uterus or to the uterus and the lateral end it opens into the peritoneal cavity which is nearer to the ovary so it has two ends one is the medial and another one is the lateral end these fallopian tubes are the paid muscular tubes and this uterine tube has the following parts one is the uterine part that passes through the thick uterine so this medial part is called the uterine part in the relatively narrow thick wall part which is called as the isthmus this part is called the isthmus it is slightly narrow but it is thick walled and the third part is a thin walled part which is called as the ampulla and it is a dilated part and the fourth part is called as the fimbriae so this is the dilated and thin walled part which is called as the ampulla and these finger like projections are called as the fimbriae so these four are the parts of a fallopian tube or a uterine tube. Now let's know about the proper histology of the uterine tube. The wall of the uterine tube consists of three layers from inside to outside. The first layer is the mucous membrane. The second layer is the muscle coat. And the third layer is the serosa. Now coming to the first layer that is the mucous membrane. In this diagram, this is the mucous membrane. The mucous membrane shows a numerous of branching folds that almost fill the lumen of the tube. So this is the lumen of the tube. These folds are very conspicuous in the ampulla. The ampulla is the third part of the fallopian tube. Each fold have a highly cellular core of a connective tissue and this mucous membrane is lined by the columnar epithelium that rests on a basement membrane. So the lining epithelium is the columnar epithelium which contains of the cilia so you can see the ciliated columnar epithelium here and it rests on the basement membrane this cilia helps in the movement of the ova towards the uterus during the process of the fertilization or the ovulation and a main point to remember and another cells called as peg cells are also present in the mucous membrane these cells are secretory in nature and they contain secretory granules and these are not ciliated. So this is the point to remember. And another type of cells which are called as the intercalary cells are also present. You should remember these points. These cells are secretory in nature and these peg cells are not ciliated whereas they contain microvilli. And now coming to the second layer that is the muscle coat. The muscle coat has an inner circular layer and the outer longitudinal layer of smooth muscle. So the muscle coat contains the inner circular layer of the smooth muscles and the outer longitudinal layer of the smooth muscle. So the muscle coat contains the inner circular layer and the outer longitudinal layer of the smooth muscles. So this is the muscle layer, muscle coat. And remember, sometimes the inner longitudinal layer of the muscle coat are also present. The circular layer of the muscle coat is the thickest in the first part that is the uterine part of the fallopian tube and the inner circular layer is very much thicker in isthmus also. So the uterine part and the isthmus part of the fallopian tube contains a thick layer of the inner circular layer. And now coming to the third layer that is the serosa. The serosa consists of the mesothelium which is supported by a connective tissue. So this is the serosa which is the outermost layer and it is supported by a connective tissue. 
In the clinical correlation of the uterine tube is the ectopic tubal pregnancy in which the term ectopic means it is used for the implantation of a fertilized ovum in the uterine tube. Ectopic meaning unnatural positioning. So the ectopic tubal pregnancy is the most common form of the ectopic gestation. And sometimes the ectopic pregnancy can be a serious problem because of the rupture which is followed by the intraperitoneal hemorrhage. So this ectopic pregnancy is the important clinical feature which is the ectopic tubal pregnancy in the topic of the uterine tube. So guys this is all about the histology of the uterine tube. If you like this video do subscribe to my channel. If anyone is seeking quick and effortless admission in these following countries you can contact me on Instagram at knowing underscore anatomy. Link is in the description. And do look at some of my recent videos and playlists.